start into, technically, it's two more lessons we're doing. It's 4.4 and 4.5, but I have 4.5 broken up into two different halves, part one and a part two. Basically, we are going to practice, we're, we're going to learn and then practice how to graph all six trig functions by hand. Okay, so about the only benefit your calculator will give you here is you could possibly check if you change, you know, if you adjust the window on your calculator went up. But we're going to learn how we graph sine and cosine by hand. What do they look like? And then what do different values do to the equation? Now, some preliminary stuff, okay? So I'm going to spend today and tomorrow going through sine and cosine information, okay? Your homework throughout these next several lessons are going to be worksheets. Basically, your worksheet is going to be doing six of your own graphs, okay? So you'll have a worksheet you'll have to get from me each time. And then um, the other thing I want to comment is because I want you to have good feedback, we can all go into the graph and say, yeah, yeah, that looks close enough. But because I want you to have good and accurate feedback before we take a quiz, probably end of next week would be my guess, I will be grading the worksheets. Okay, so it won't be your typical just completion check. I will be grading the worksheets each time. So I'm just trying to give you a heads up about that. Um, you'll have a chance to ask questions about the worksheets before you turn them in. But just FYI, okay, it's not your typical completion check. I will be graded because I want you guys to have the feedback of, yes, I'm okay with how you did this. No, I'm not okay with how you did this. Okay? Because I know you guys can be looking at things and thinking, yeah, that looks great. And then I can totally disagree. So, okay? Oh, it's always interesting to see. Some of you guys, these graphs will come naturally. For some of you, it will be a struggle. And it's not always... I don't know. It's always interesting because it's not always, you know, based on, you know, the stronger students, you know, definitely do great on the graphs. It's not, you know, it's interesting. So, okay. So we are starting with the two basics, sine and cosine. Okay. So you have examples up here of what a basic sine curve graph looks like and a cosine curve graph. Now, one thing I will tell you is that these graphs do not just end here. Okay. What you are looking at in both the sine and cosine world is one cycle or one phase of the graph, okay? And when we do sine and cosine, that's going to be my expectation for you, that you graph one cycle. Not that we can't graph more. The calculator will, will automatically graph more. I don't know if you guys remember back in 1.3 we graphed sine and cosine. What did our calculator show? It was just up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay, so a sine, this is one cycle of sine, and then one cycle of cosine looks like such, okay? And as I said, they do keep going. Now, so information here, a cycle of cosine or sine is 2 pi. You'll notice both these graphs go from 0 to 2 pi, okay? They both have the same range in terms of the lowest either graph goes is negative 1. The highest either graph goes is positive 1. Obviously, that can change if we stretch or compress a graph, which we will talk about. Um, but those are some of the basics. When I graph sine and cosine, you'll see me kind of break them up into four pieces. Okay? So being that, you know, 0 to 2 pi, if I break that up into four pieces, there's pi in the middle. And then there's 1 half pi and 1 and a half pi. But I'll kind of break it up into four pieces that with sine, you start at 0, 0. You go a quarter of the way and you have a max for the top of the mountain. At halfway, you cut through the x-axis again. Three quarters of the way, you have a minimum. And then at the fourth, you know, the final part, you cut through the x-axis again. Okay? With cosine, technically cosine is just a shifted version of sine. Okay? Cosine, basically, and we could look at it a couple different ways, but instead of, you know, cosine is basically looking, and I'm going to erase this, but from like here to here on the sine curve. Okay? It's just a different view of the curve. So cosine starts with the max is what happens. So it starts up at 0, 1. A quarter of the way it cuts through. Halfway through there's a minimum. 
three quarters of the way it cuts through, and at the end there's a max one. So every quarter of the graph, you're either hitting a min, a max, or a zero. You're cutting through the x-axis. Okay? Now, as you look through the equations, we're not going to just graph plane old sine and cosine. That would get too boring. So we're going to be looking at the different transformations. So we have some forms here. Um, a times sine of bx minus c plus d, or a times cosine of bx minus c plus d. Identifying whether it's a sine or a cosine graph will tell you what it looks like. Where do we start? Okay. The a out front, okay, that a out front, the absolute value of it is what we call the amplitude. Okay. If you go back to your transformations, that chart we've looked at back in Algebra 2 and then again pre-calc, it's your vertical stretch or compression. Okay. So that A tells us how, how far do we stretch it up and do we stretch it down. So you could, if you want to, think of this as your, and you don't necessarily have to write these in, but it is a vertical stretch or compression. Okay. So a normal graph goes as high as 1, as low as negative 1. If you stretch or compress it, it will go higher or not as high. Okay, 2 pi divided by b is the length, it's your period, and it's the length of one cycle. I already talked about how in both cases one cycle of curve is 2 pi. Okay, if you take that and divide that by the b amount, the b amount being the coefficient of x, that will adjust your cycle. Okay, maybe instead of being in 2 pi, it'll take 4 pi to draw a cycle. Or maybe we'll get through it in just 1 pi. So that is more of a horizontal stretch or shrink, stretch or shrink. I guess I said stretch or compression here. Which words do we use? We've used both, haven't we? Compression or shrink. Okay. But this is more of a horizontal stretch or shrink or stretch or compression. Okay. So that's going to adjust how your graph, the length of your graph. Okay. C divided by B. So C is the value that is added or subtracted within the parentheses. Okay. When we talk about using that C value, now we're talking about, here it's talking about a phase shift. Basically, it's your horizontal shift is what it is. Okay. It's your horizontal translation. C over B is going to tell me how far am I moving my graph left or right. So if we compare it back to algebra 2, it is your horizontal, I'm going to use the official translation. Um, our vertical translation is a little bit different. We talk about D. So D is your number added or subtracted at the end there. So we talk about the number added or subtracted at the end. If you go back to our algebra 2 list, it was how far up or down the graph goes. Okay. Here we talk about the center line because... These graphs are so much easier to graph if you're graphing on the center line. So what we'll be doing is, instead of actually moving our graph up and down, we'll just be relabeling this. Instead of calling our center line zero, we'll bring our center line to where it needs to be, and we'll label it appropriately. But So this is how we deal with the vertical translation. Okay. And then... As always, a negative out front of the graph is going to be a reflection. Okay, so a negative A value will tell you to flip the graph, or in other words, it is a reflection, and your graph will go upside down. Okay, we don't do any um, reflections that are across the y-axis here. We solely stick with x-axis reflections, so you're flipping it up and down. Okay, this chart right here, this for, these forms, these are going to be incredibly helpful. Eventually, this is just going to become memorized information. Okay, so let's look at example one. Example one, y equals 3 sine of x minus 4. As we go through here. The first thing I will lead you to do 
and come quiz time, it's something I'll have you do, is I always kind of take this blank space over here and I list all the information I know. Okay, so what do we know about um, amplitude, period, phase shift, center line, and are the, you know, is there any type of reflection? Okay. What'd you say now? Okay, so this three out front is my A value, right? You have the chart right up above in your notes. This three up front is my um, A value. So for here, I'm going to call it my amplitude. And my amplitude of three, okay, it is a vertical stretch. I just call it the amplitude. But it's going to be how high or low your graph goes. Okay, so when we do an amplitude of three, that means instead of my graph going normally to one and negative one, now it's going to go to three above and three below. Okay, and we'll demonstrate that. What's that for? What is that in the position of? Okay, it is outside the parentheses. That's key to note, isn't it? It's outside the parentheses, so it is my D value. And what does my D value determine? The center line. So this is saying that I'm going to have a center line at, since it's minus 4, I'm going to say negative 4. Okay. In algebra 2, we would have said this is a minus 4 at the end. is going to take my graph and move it down 4. Okay, it's not with the x in parentheses, so it's up or down, down 4. What we're going to do is instead of physically moving our graph down 4, is we're just going to change our center line value. Okay? Um, <coughs> let's talk about the period. Okay, period is something you always need to identify and talk about. According to our chart, we find the period by doing 2 pi over b. What is b? Okay, because b is the number in front of x, yes? So my number in front of x is invisible b. So if we do 2 pi divided by 1, well, Math geniuses, 2 pi divided by 1 is 2 pi. <coughs> what this says is that one cycle of this curve is going to take 2 pi, which is the normal cycle. Okay, so we're not going to do any stretch or shrink in a horizontal fashion in this, on this example. We're going to start off basic. So it's one cycle. <coughs> Um, let's see, what have we not addressed? Phase shift. How do we find phase shift? C over B. What's C? 1 or 0. Okay. Because C is supposed to be the number that is... Added or, added or subtracted on X, right? If I have my right. I just know the locations. I forget what's A, B, C, D, okay, from year to year. So I have to review with my brain here. But um, C is the number that's added or subtracted from X. Do I have a number added or subtracted directly from X? No. So what that tells me is there's no phase shift, okay? Because if I look right in there, there is no C. So C equals zero. I don't need to worry about phase shift because my graph is not moving left or right, it's staying normal. And then the only other thing we haven't talked about is the reflection. Well, my A value of 3 is positive, so this is just going to be a normal graph. What's the shape of my graph going to be? What kind of curve is this? This is a sine curve. Now, one of the things I also try and get you guys to think about is stop and pause. You're going to have to have it memorized eventually, but what does a sine curve look like? A sine curve is the one that is mountain valley. Fair enough. Okay, that's what my brain's going. You know, it starts at the center. It's a mountain valley. I did that backwards for you guys. But. 
It's so hard to reverse stuff up here. Okay, are we ready to graph? Okay, let's get our labels. So one of the first labels we want to do is center line. Our center line is normally zero. What's it going to be in this case? Negative four. Now, you can label that center line out here. Okay, when I say center line, I'm talking about your x-axis. Or you can throw a negative four in there. Pick or choose, or do both. Okay. After you label center line, talk amplitude. How high and low is this graph supposed to go? Okay, it has an amplitude of three, which means from that center line, my graph is going to go, the highest points are going to be up three from that, and my lowest points are going to be down three from that. So whether you do three tick marks up and three tick marks down, or whether you just label that max and min, that's fine. But what is three up going to put us at? Three up from negative four is at negative one. What is three down from negative four put us at? Negative seven. So what I know is my graph is going to be between negative seven to negative one. Okay? And then, so that's my vertical labeling. As we think horizontal labeling, what is one period? Well, one period is just two pi. So as I label my graph, I have to be able to go as far as 2 pi, which is just a traditional graph. And so I'm basically going to use this whole x-axis here, and I'm going to label it 2 pi. Now, this is going to be one of the hardest parts for some of you sometimes is the labeling. Okay? I tend to, rather than start here and just make tick marks, I tend to say, okay, I need to go as far as 2 pi. And then my graph, naturally, the way I teach it, breaks into four pieces. So I want to break this into fourths. So as I find my halfway point, what is that little extra mark? What's the halfway point of 0 and 2 pi? And that is 1 pi, yes? And I know, this one seems, you're like, really, Sergeant, you're making this so silly, but... It won't be when we get into the harder ones, okay? And then break each of these halves into halves, which means you're breaking them into fourths, right? What's the middle of zero and pi? Okay, the middle of zero and one is one half. So the middle of zero and pi is one half pi, or more traditionally put, pi over two. Middle of pi, one pi and two pi. Yeah, it's one and a half if you want. The middle of one and two is one and a half. More traditionally put, we say three halves, or in other words, three pi over two. Okay? Now, I am not a person that can just start drawing and draw my curve. I can't do it. I have to kind of have some marks to hit. Okay, maybe you're someone that you can just draw and you can hit your marks, but I have to have some marks to hit. So what kind of curve was I drawing? I'm drawing a sine curve. So my sine curve begins at the origin, so to speak. In this case, it's technically at negative 4, but I'm beginning at the origin. Okay. I broke this into four pieces on purpose. The first thing my sine curve does is it goes up. So at the first quarter mark, it's going to hit a max. And that max is going to be at the level of how high did we mark up? Negative 1. At the next point, at my halfway point then, I'm going to cross through the x-axis. So I'm going to be crossing through the x-axis at pi. Three-fourths of the way is going to be my valley, right? We have the peak of the mountain, and we cross through. Now I have... What's the word for the bottom of the valley? I don't, I don't have that right vocabulary word. But we're going to have the bottom of the valley. How low should the bottom of the valley be? It should be at negative 7. And then we're going to cross through at 2 pi. Those are the points I'm looking for you to hit. Okay? 
Now, a sine curve is tr technically rounded, not pointy. Okay? I always see some pointies, but technically these are rounded curves. And you're just connecting something like that. Traditionally, oh man, don't forget, it can stay. Traditionally, it does go past the, the end points, and you can put little arrows there to indicate that it is continuing past them. Now, I mentioned the comment that this is not a calculator thing, right? And in fact, I don't know that I would, I probably won't allow calculators on this quiz. Okay? With that in mind, can you use your calculator to an extent to check yourself? To an extent. But here's the deal. Okay? If I just type this in, so what's my original graph? 3 sine, whoops, 3 sine of x in parentheses minus 4. First of all, I typed sine. What mode should I be in to do anything with sine? You need to be in radians, which I was not, which is why I pointed. If I hit graph right now, gosh darn it, I'm not on. Okay. Let me do a zoom 6. Well, that doesn't really look like the graph exactly on my paper, does it? Because my graph went as low as negative 4, didn't it? Now, if I want to make it look like what I have there, one thing you can do is you can change your window settings. X min. How far did my graph go left? I have it as 0. How far did my graph go right? I did 2 pi. Y min. How far did my graph go left? Or Y min low? Negative 7. How high did it go? Negative 1. Now that should more match what you see up there. Hello. Marcheski? Okay. You're welcome. Bye. Okay. Does my graph kind of match what's up on the screen there? Okay. So that's one way you can kind of check it. It's not perfect. But you kind of get an idea there, don't you? I will also tell you, I did a Z standard originally. Number seven is Z trig. And Z trig is actually helpful because it puts it in terms of like highs. Like if I look at my window setting, no, it doesn't tell me here, but each X scale is 1.57. So each little tick mark represents 1.57, which is high over 2. So I probably should have done that first. But those are some ways you can kind of check yourself. Okay? Now, we're going to go ahead and start talking about the next one. We may have to finish it up tomorrow. I'm not sure I'll get all the way through it, but I want to talk about it a little bit. Pinpointing the information is half the battle, okay? Y equals negative 2 cosine of 2X plus 1. What information can you point out? There's a reflection. Okay. Why, how do we know there's a reflection? Because there's a negative out front, yes? So because there is a negative out front... I know there's a reflection. So whatever my graph normally looks like, it's now going to be upside down. So it's a reflection across the x-axis. What is my graph supposed to be? It's supposed to be a cosine curve. Up at the top of your page, what does a cosine curve look like? Cosine curve is what I would call... It's a valley, yes? Now, what's going to happen when we reflect that, though? Okay, it's not going to be a valley anymore. This cosine, when we graph it, because it's reflected, is going to be a mountain. Now, that's just kind of my brain working. Okay, and I'm beginning to think it was a bad idea to start this, but that's all right. We'll deal with the results tomorrow. 
Okay, what else do we know besides it's going to be a reflection? It has amplitude of 2. Do you guys agree with her? Yes. Amplitude is based on absolute value of A. A is the number out front. So in this case, A is in front of cosine. That's 2. So that means how high and low my graph goes, right? Okay, so I don't know if you need to write that reminder, but that's what it is. What about a center line? There's a center line of 1 because there is a plus 1 outside of the parentheses. Okay. <coughs> We always need to talk about the period. Period is 2 pi divided by b, which is 2. b is the coefficient of x, so 2 pi divided by 2, which is pi. That means my graph that normally fits in 0 to 2 pi is now going to shrink and fit in 0 to pi. Okay? Okay. An adjustment we'll have to make. So that is one cycle. Now, the only other thing we haven't addressed, phase shift. <coughs> All right. What, can, what do we have in the way of a phase shift? Is there a plus or minus in the parentheses? No. Our C again is zero, meaning there's no phase shift. Okay. So my graph is still going to start here at the center. <coughs> and we'll pick up there tomorrow. Sorry. So um, we'll pick up there in the notes tomorrow. We'll have several to do.